We will increase the intensity a bit. Try to maintain your feet in place. We are here at one of the two movement laboratories of the Dundas Institute. Here we perform research on gait, which is an English term for walking and, and balance in both healthy people and people with diseases. And this is actually the balance lab, so here we study balance control. We've done a training study in people who had a stroke. We studied whether training is able to improve their balance performance. Here we are looking at the Viking screen, so this is basically the behavioral or the kinematic data. And here we track all the body movements during the experiment. So if we apply perturbation, then we can see how the body exactly moves during a certain intensity. What we can learn from this data is when we align this kinematic data with the, the brain activity data, which we collect through the EEG, so we can pinpoint specific uh, moments during the perturbation and look at what the brain data is telling us. An example of clinical oriented research um, is for example walking problems in people with Parkinson's disease. One example are the laser shoes. The common symptom of Parkinson's disease, the feeling of being glued to the floor, unable to move despite the desire to keep walking. Laser guided shoes can counteract this freezing of gait, say researchers in the Netherlands. The problem um, with Parkinson's disease is that people have difficulties to perform movements automatically. Uh, and walking is what we do automatically. So we are as healthy people able to walk without thinking of walking. Um, and the laser shoes improve walking as they switch from walking automatically to more goal-directed walking. So people see the line of the laser in front of them and then step towards the line. So this is a healthy participant walking on our treadmill. Uh, you can see that we applied reflective markers and these reflective markers are captured by all those cameras and using those markers we are able to create a 3D model of a walking pattern within the computer. We can do different kinds of analysis. Sometimes we have uh, patient populations and we match them with a healthy population just to see where all the differences lie. But what we also do is, um, for example, when we have a patient population, we do a test before we give an intervention. We provide the intervention and do another measurement afterwards just to see what the improvements or what the differences are. What we ask for this task is first to participant to walk for 30 seconds at a regular pace. And the application measures then how long they make their step and with what step width they make their step. So for us that would be rather easy to do because we are quite good in control of our balance. But when you ask a participant or a patient to do this, it's quite difficult because they cannot choose where they place their step. The stepping stones determine where your next step is made and that makes it quite difficult to control your balance and to make sure that your step, well, lands at the right position. Here our participant has an EEG cap uh, on and uh, this cap contains 128 EEG electrodes. So it's a very high resolution that we can measure at. So on her legs you can see the muscle, uh, the EMG electrodes. These electrodes help us to uh, measure the activity of the muscle itself. And then we can also tell some more about the synergy um, of the muscles, the different muscles on the legs during a perturbation or recovery of a perturbation. Eventually that may tell us some more about how the brain um, activates certain muscles during different intensities of perturbations. The main difference between the setup, setup that we have over here and the setup on the treadmill is that here we can um, recreate the more uh, regular walking as people don't usually walk on a treadmill and we know there are quite some differences when people walk on the treadmill or walk over ground. In addition to the setup we have over here, people can use their walking aids so we can see what differences that create. We use those labs for both clinical and research purposes uh, and we apply both fundamen fundamental research so how does the brain enable us to walk and to maintain balance? But also clinically oriented research. So how can we learn people with neurological conditions to walk better and to maintain their balance in order not to fall?